welcome to... Oh, is that too far away? No, no, it's good, man. Oh, was that good? Yeah. Was that a good angle? You got a good angle on that. To Bros Knows Best, yeah. a movie review podcast. Oh. See, it feels really far away. Isn't that funny that you can have a microphone quite far away and yet it it's can, working? It can still pick it up. Isn't that... Yeah, yeah. Modern technology. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good That's right good there. now? Yeah, that's good right there. Yeah. A movie review podcast, and it is, it's quite... That it does feel a little far, yet somehow I'm looking at the levels and the levels are good. Yeah, it's pretty the good. levels are good. Hey, look, hosted you know- by me, Ben <laughs> Charlesworth. Because yeah, if see, even if I angle it a little bit more like this, whoa, whoa. how's that? Is that changing that- the decibel region a little bit more? Maybe just a and my brother Scott Charlesworth. Hey, hello. How are you, bloody going, mate? Oh, mate, I am frothing because we have a very special movie on for today. Yes, if you're just joining us, I was worried that we're having some technical difficulties <laughs> there. But no. No. no, that's the magic of technology, that's I guess. That's the magic of technology, We've yeah. We've got SM7Bs, so fuck you yeah. with, your, with your stupid Industry doubts. standard. We've got the cool <laughs> podcast mics, your dogs. We've got... Um, Minus all the other stuff you need, like acoustic treatment and everything. Like acoustic treatment, like, like good, lighting, good lighting, like good camera, yeah. like good hosts, like hey, good content. We're but ragtagging what, it. But you know, they, the, the big boys told us, if you need to, if you want to be in a successful podcast, you need some of these boys. It's true. You need That's a big right. mic like you need, this. You need some of these. You need a huge, huge, huge mic like this. That's what you want. Yep. That's right, mate. It's been years since I've seen you. I don't know, man. I since just we I don't last think I've seen an you. Episode. I don't think I've seen you for weeks. I know you look. Weeks. You look meek. You look, no, you, you. You look great. You look damaged. You actually look great. You got a haircut today too. I you're, did. You're I did get very a haircut. Fresh, I did I get a say. haircut. Yeah, but you've been sitting on the lounge, so it's kind of flat at the back at the moment. Oh really? So if you if you turn your head, you should be embarrassed. Hang on, let me take my headphones off. We'll do a bit of live one. You've got to commentate though, because yeah. people also oh, only right. listen to the podcast. Okay, so he's taken off his headphones and he's looking to the side. Oh, and he's got a mighty fine fade on the sides there. It's the little curly mullet. That's bursty. Wow. It really like fits the angle of your face as well. Like I feel like it's I'll be honest. We um, we're both probably gonna be pretty tired. For this episode, oh, we both yeah. went to a concert last night. Viagra, Viagra Boys, Boys. Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh. And then we both think we got food poisoning from chicken nuggets. I we won't name the establishment because it is a good establishment. Yes, it's the burgers are great there, but we decided you and know let's just we, say Mary had a little lamb. We were not um, satisfied enough with our hunger levels. We were like, we need just a little bit more to get us through the night so we can stay in the mosh pit and actually survive mm-hmm. without dropping to the ground in hunger. Yeah. Um, so we decided to get some chicken nuggets and they came out as little chicken bits. Which was wonderful. It was I, pretty cool. It's a nice surprise. I don't know if it was the chicken. Yeah. I don't know if it was the burger. I think well, it was I don't the know if chicken. it was the mosh and being dehydrated and constantly pushed and bashed. Could have been, yeah. but... Look, the the thing is, though, we both ate... That was the only thing that we both ate the same thing of. Was and then the we both felt nuggets. sick. And we both felt sick. Yeah, I thought I was about to spew ass yeah, last night. Yeah, you were, you were about to shoot some squirters this morning, right? Dude, I was green as grass yeah, and not in a it. fun way. No. I was rotten, absolutely rotten. But oh. it's all right. 2 a.m.'s passed. It's now a new day. It's, it's the new day. Back on the horse. Yeah, we're back on the horse. And we're riding that horse like a <laughs> motherfucker. Um, <laughs> do you want me to we, give you the synopsis to this movie? Or, hey, I you, don't know, maybe you could tell the people we, what movie we watched. Oh, even though it is in the title, which is why they clicked on this video. Uh, we watched... Now, this was a long time coming because the first movie of this was Spider-Man... Into the Spider Verse, and we watched the sequel today. Oh, yeah, we did. We did watch the sequel and Spider Man Across the Spider. This is a long time coming because Episode Three, yeah, was when we first reviewed that movie. That's it is now it feels episode so long ago, man. Fucking so let's say seventy something, seventy four. Probably it is now episode. It's seven. 74. 74? Yeah. Oh, the big Whoa. seven four. Seventy four. Yeah, big seven four. Big seven four. How do you feel about that? Fucking Crazy. riveted. No, I do. I feel ecstatic and I feel rejuvenated. Yeah. I do. I do. Um, so, yeah, give me the synopsis. Give very the synopsis. exciting stuff. So, we're doing the sequel. Yes, we're doing the sequel and oh, very excited to do it. Yeah. Uh, about a year after Kingpin's Collider was destroyed, 
By our friendly neighborhood spider gang, Miles Morales has continued his journey into living up as the new Spider-Man. But when multiversal problems arise, he becomes the center of what will be his greatest challenge yet. Very vague, but I just wanted to hit it with you that. I'm going to go straight into it. Straight into it. Yep. Do you think that this movie is better than the first one? No, it's not. It's not better than the first one. I disagree. That's great. Boom. Um, but I feel like it lives up to the hype of the first one. Now, the reason why I say that is because the first one holds a special place in my heart. It's like, I don't know, the introductory to this kind of animation style to the big screen sort of thing. Yeah. Like a mishmash between, you know, different frame rates, um, different, uh, like a conversion of like, no, a, colli a, a collision of different animation styles all coming together. And like the first one just feels like this night, Nice, tight little package. Oh, and they have Post Malone Sunflower. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what that's what gets it. Just an extra extra half nug higher. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can probably already tell what the score's going to be by me saying that. But not really. I listened back and heard what our scores were in the last one. Oh, I won't right. say What was my score? End. What was my score? I won't say until the end. Oh. No, that's spoiling it. What do you mean? It's, it was episode three. Yeah. You can't spoil it. That was... That was 71 episodes ago. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. Well, I think it is better. You, you like it better one. than the first one. I haven't seen the first one probably since we watched it, but... No, yeah, true. But, oh man, what a s way to do a sequel as well, eh? I reckon... Unbelievable. The reason why I'm yeah. going to say this is better... Yep. Yeah. ...is I think the first one has all those characters established so well. Mm -hmm. So well. For sure. And a lot of the time in a sequel... It's sort of like we go bigger and better yeah. on, you know, the action and the stakes, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, the, the world, the world building in a way. Yeah. But what they don't usually do is go crazy big and beyond on character building. No. And they went insane on the character building. They with absolutely Gwen, did, yeah. with Miles and Rio and the dad that I've forgotten his name. Uh, Jeff. It, Jeff, no? Jeff Morales. Jeff Hardy. Wait, hold on. Let me let me fact check that for you. Hold on. I know what's played on. by Brian Tyree it is Jeff. Henry. It is Jeff. 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 It's Jeff Morales. Well, Jeff is a G. Jeff is an absolute G. He's and actually a J, but he's a G. Oh, yeah, true. He's not yeah. a G-off. He's yeah. not a G-off. You just got to let him spread his wings, man. Shout out Jeff McNabb. Um, Sweaty. No, the parents for me. Yeah. Controversial. Not a controversial, just underrated are my two favorite characters. I'm oh, gonna say it. They do. I'm going to say it. Dude, honestly, I don't blame you. They're great characters. They're such a nice support network for Miles. You can see their perspective, where they're coming from. Um, obviously, they don't know his secret identity yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do know his real identity, which is the secret identity. But they don't know that oh, he's yeah, Spider-Man. That doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, I said that the wrong way around. They don't know he's Spider-Man. They don't know he's Spider-Man. But they do know he's Miles Morales because they named him and raised him. Exactly. Him. Well, yeah. Rio birthed him. I don't think Jeff did. <laughs> Unless in that universe, a I man... You know. never know. Who knows? It is an alternative it's universe. It's a Maybe Spider-Man. Jeff man. shot Miles out of his arsehole. It was a canon a, event. It was a canon event. It's a canon event. I completely agree with you, though, with the whole fact that it dives into the character depth way more in this. Like... You just, that's why it's a two and a half hour movie because it needs that time to give you the juicy bits of all these different characters so that we can actually attach ourselves even deeper, especially Gwen too. Like the I whole, really like Gwen story. It's like a whole 20 minutes at the start that's mm -hmm. just dedicated to Gwen. And I love that. I was going to so say, much. did you enjoy them starting off with her instead? Loved it. It was really like, different you know it felt sick instead of um yeah instead of jumping straight into miles's story which yeah. made the first scene of miles feel like the start of the film that was almost like a a cool way to recap the first film mm, yeah no that's for sure i i liked how you know gwen's relationship with her dad um as like being spider woman and stuff like the whole you know the captain not liking Spider-Woman and stuff. Same yes. with like what happened with Miles in the first movie, you know, the captain not liking Spider-Man at some points and mm -hmm. stuff as well. Like I thought that was a nice reflection of that. And like you see how that story comes about again in a different way. Like by this time, the captain quitting 
Yes. And yeah. like going, oh, you know what? You're my daughter. Um, whatever sort of thing. But like the whole... But isn't that ruining a canon event in itself? Because then... No, no, no. To die? Because probably someone else is going to become the police captain and they're going to end up dying. Oh, right. That's what Does I... Does it have to be the police captain though? Well, it said that's what the canon event was. Like a police captain close to a spider person um, has to die. And that, that's that's a thing. That they've already lost happen. Uncle Ben. Yeah, but that's the first one. Like, so they've got Uncle Ben slash Aunt May slash a person, Uncle Aaron. Right. Um, there's like that canon event for every single spider. That creates them and then yeah. to spur them on from a fun spider to a serious spider a serious is spider. the next one. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I was going to say is Miles has already lost Uncle Aaron. Yeah. He doesn't need to lose Jeff Hardy. He doesn't need to lose Jeff Hardy at all. But no. Jeff Hardy, but that is, is the next. Die, maybe that's the next part in it. And uh, well, you know, I guess we'll have to see what the third movie brings because Jeff. I mean, if you've played the video games or you've read the comics and stuff, Jeff dies. That's oh, does he? Yeah, I think in the comics they I can't think. kill Jeff. They kill. Well, they kill Jeff in the in the video game. What video game? There's a Miles video game? No, in um, the Spider-Man video game. PlayStation, PS4, and PS5. I played Spider-Man. Jeff dies at City Hall, man. He gets bombed. Oh, <laughs> M- Mr. Negative. Sorry. Yeah, Boom, yeah, yeah, bitch. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. At that bit. I was like, wait, is this in Spider-Man 2? Like, the one hold on. Played? Where is this guy no, going? No, no, no. Yes, that's... Yeah. But that's, that's his spur on moment. Yeah. It is his spur on moment. Yeah. I don't know. I think this one's better than the first. I enjoy it. I also enjoy... I, I can understand why you think that too, because it's it's an awesome fucking movie, bro. Mm. So many... Well, oh, man. And the, like the animation as well. I really like oh. that in every different universe, the animation looked different. A completely different style. With Le- Gwen's one. Yes. It's like that... Um, that aqua, pink, purpley sort of vibe. It's hazy. It's like a... I don't know. You're looking through sort of like a foggy filter the whole yes, time. Yes, yeah, very Technicolor. Yeah, I really like that for sure. No, I really did like that. And then in the 2029 one, mm. that full futuristic city, but it was very much just paper drawn almost. Mm-hmm. It felt that yeah. was really cool. That's cool. Um, and you also had like the different animation styles of you know we had parchment vulture from the um, yes, like the Leonardo Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio universe. <laughs> God, I love that Leonardo DiCaprio universe. Amazing. It was really good in the Leonardo DiCaprio universe <laughs> where it was the vulture and he just kept sleeping with 25-year-old women whilst yeah. he was like nearly 60. Oh, I thought great. that was really, really a fresh take. Stood off on the front of a boat as well. He's like, hold me, Jack. That was in his younger hold years. Hold me, Jack. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then now he keeps 25 and then he, he goes for that That's why he's the boom. vulture. He swoops in and... <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. That was actually Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it. We've we've cracked the code right there. That's beautiful. It's finished. What was a standout moment that made it better for you than the first movie? What, like, obviously, you said the character development, but like, what's an example of the the depth that took you to the limit to go, "Hey, I love this way more." We find out that Miles was the first anomaly and that he yeah. is a mistake. Oh, what a fucking twist, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. I, that for me was like, bro. Yeah. But then I also thought about it. Mm. It's not his fault. It's Kingpin's fault. It's Kingpin's fault. He just happened to be in the area at the time and yeah. get bit by the spider. If you're thinking about the whole like flow of the timeline thing then with like it because it really does come down to like a fate sort of theme with this whole thing that they've introduced with the canon events and stuff like that yeah it's like it's it's meant to be this way so wasn't it by that logic meant to be that way that miles ends up as spider-man in the end like what's the the difference there he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time that makes almost a little bit no no sense like i feel like he is supposed to be spider-man and that's going to be revealed in the third movie Mm. Like this, they're all saying at the moment, no, this is wrong. It's a spider from a different universe. Well, c- according to this universe, it's correct. Yeah. Because even though they're getting something from another, un- the radioactive spider from the other universe to come bite Miles, um, not intentionally, to, you, you get what I mean. But 
the flow of events is going to be a canon event. Sort of thing. Yeah, it wasn't his fault that That's it. Kingpin was trying to get it's his flawed family logic. back. Yeah, by M- Miguel O'Hara's. Uh, yeah, not the writers. The writers no, are good. No, here. the writers are good. It's Scott Miguel's hates the writers. <laughs> Miguel's logic against Miles's want to go save his um, dad and being a Spider-Man is wrong, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think we're going to see that. He was there. He was chilling. Yeah. Next thing you know. Spider comes out, yeah. bites him, portal opens, and old mate saves him and dies saving him. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's not Peter Parker's fault. That cool blonde hot one or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? You remember Weird him? blonde Peter Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they take the mask off and you're like, he's blonde? He's fucking blonde? What? Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of random Peters and Parkers. Yes. Who was your favorite? Because there was a lot of cameos here. Oh, I can tell you my favorite straight off the Yeah, your yeah, favorite Spider-Man this one? Ben Riley, Ben Riley, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Scarlet Spider Man, voiced by Andy Samberg, very cool. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. This the smoldering. Oh, look at my defined physique. Yes, yes. <laughs> and his animation style being that of the comics as well. Mm-hmm. The nineties sort of ultra ripped, um, almost Rob Liefeld esque. No, not Rob Liefeld. That's wrong. Um, oh, I don't know. I, I, the name is not on my my brain oh, right now. Stan Lee. Um, Oh, Frank Miller. Frank Miller. Oh, yes. Stan Hold Lee. Hold on. Let me just fact check this for you right oh, now. I love Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Frank Miller. He's got a first Miller, name and a last Spider-Man. name. That's my favorite, Stan Lee. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's like that sort of edgy sort of 90s look to the Scarlet Spider that I really like. I thought that was really sick. And yeah, it's just, it's such a funny com- uh, comedy, uh, a funny comedic you know relief sort of character yes to add to it yeah a couple of other notable mentions we had the is it from the spectacular spider-man tv series is in there the yes. little animated guy and he comes in he's like sorry peter we have to oh sorry miles whatever the fuck his name is <laughs> we have to uh enslave you i don't think he says that and yeah. now that sounds racist <laughs> uh, when they're trying to capture him anyway and not let miles escape to save his dad and uh, we have ps5 Slash PS4 yes, Spider-Man. Yes. Well, it's technically PS4. Insomniac yeah. Spider-Man. Insomniac Spider-Man. We have Childish Gambino, mm. or Donald Glover, whatever you prefer, oh, as the Prowler. We do. We also have a, just a regular Rhino. <laughs> yes, we have a regular <laughs> Rhino. Um, we could just we could rattle off heaps of different. That's what we're going to do right now. That's variants, what this segment you know? is. It's called the boys rattle off a bunch of Spider Mans in that Spider Man movie with I all like the Spider Man. That. That's good. So here we go. Plushy Spider Man. We have Plushy Spider Man, T Rex Spider Man. Uh, the 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 Spider Man with the two robotic arms that come out of it, his um his suit, which is like an even more futuristic Spider Man than twenty ninety nine. It's like I don't know three thousand something or I don't know something ridiculous in the future. Had the nineteen sixty Spider Man. They did, yeah. yeah. And we did get a little hint back at Noir Spider Man right at the very end. Yeah, I was a little Cage disappointed w- that yeah, Black uh no- oh, Black Noir. No, no, not Black Noir. <laughs> what the fuck, Noir Spider Man? Get wasn't your in this. get your characters right. Noir Spider Man wasn't yeah. in that. No, that's fair enough. We um, also had you're in boys' brain gun sing- slinging uh like cowboy, cowboy spider man cowboy spider man that shot webs out of the horse yeah uh, oh no out of the gun sorry yeah i read Cat but i didn't Spider-Man. actually see this one yeah um that you know the the ice cream sort of like popsicle from the first movie and yeah the, like when he's going through all the spider-man merch yeah yeah well i think that's chasing him in the big spider-man <laughs> chase apparently is what i read i didn't actually see it myself if so. you freeze frame it you can pick apart so many different types oh of yeah new rock stars here. would love that shit oh my god and the thing is with animation you can put in the time and effort to actually go the extra mile to put in all these different things whereas like if you compare it to like deadpool 3 when yes there was a different a lot of different variants in that movie it wasn't like they had like a lot of the same Deadpool, mm-hmm. like just standard Deadpool fighting Wolverine and Deadpool. But in this, it's like every Spider-Man's different. You do have like your standards popping up here and there, but they're all slightly different. Yeah, they but, went nuts with it. I think they, there's over 200 variants of Spider-Man in this. Really? Is what I, again, that I'm saying a lot of things that I read that I don't have 100% sure of. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say another thing like that. Yep. But from my understanding, now this I'm pulling from, 
this is like a years year old knowledge. Okay, okay. when the movie yeah. came out, yeah, 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 but I believe this is true. So take this with a grain of salt, audience. But I believe this is true. Right, is that the animators did an amazing job, but they uh, they got forced to do crunch. And yeah, not surprising. And this is all allegedly because I don't know. I'm sure there's sources out there. So research mm-hmm. this yourselves if yeah. I'm wrong. Um, but from memory, they got, yeah, forced to do heavy crunch and they had to work, you know, like crazy amounts of hours. I'm not going to put a number on it. So I'm going to say 15 hours a day <laughs> <laughs> no, on average. No, I yeah. don't know. The you hours. were there. You I were was there. there and oh, I was the one telling him to work. I'm pretty sure. Them. Yeah. Yeah. You were out there. You're like, man, you guys got to get these animations out. Otherwise you're fired. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty hot. I mean, that is kind of a thing that's known not just in the animation industry, but also gaming and all yeah. sorts of different industries. But creative industries do get hit hard with this stuff because yeah. they, they're given a deadline and they're like, actually, deadlines change too for these things. And higher up executives will come in and go, no, 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 buddy. We need that in way quicker than what we originally said. And then they're just like, what the fuck? Also, to... from memory, this movie was delayed by like a year. It was yeah. meant to come out in 2022 and then it got pushed back a year. It was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and whatever delay that was due to, um, I mean, it definitely paid off in the end. Well, it doesn't surprise me because there's so much going on in this film. Huge. Every scene has like a thousand things happening. If you pause this movie at any moment, mm. I guarantee you could make it your background and it would be somewhat cool. Literally is like a wallpaper every single shot. And Beautiful. This is my point. Yeah. If we're going to compare it to Deadpool, which is very hard to do, and I know they're two very different films. But okay? they're both multiversal films. Not even that. They're just both big block... Well, yes, both big blockbuster mm-hmm. multiverse films. Yeah. With the budgets that they have, I'm sure Deadpool had a bigger budget than this. Yeah. But still, the fact that this looks like what it does, Mm. that's what I expect a blockbuster movie to look like. Yeah. Not just grey and boring. Yeah. I'm not hating on Deadpool and Wolverine. It's not great. I had a fun time. Yeah. But it wasn't visually interesting. And for a movie that has so much money poured into it, Big words, big words from the boy. But no, I, I do agree. And I get it. The argument respect. is, well, actually, you can't compare animation to live action. And no, you can't. But I'm going to because I'm saying <laughs> Doesn't you, can care. Still, you can still make a movie look good yeah. in live action. Yeah, yeah. Blade Runner 2049 is an example. Yeah, that's right. You know? And that's uh, a blockbuster film. I get what you mean. Block- because like... This movie, it's uh, and yeah, obviously it's hard to compare, but the Spider-Verse movies are its own style. It has its own aesthetic. It really stands out. And everything is just popping at you the whole time. Like, not even just the um, the animation style, but like the character design. Oh. Individually is beautiful, you know? I'm do my own thing. I'm I'm do- that, yeah. like, shit. Oh, man. His face. <laughs> the, the emotion, the micro expressions in the... I think we talked about this in the very um, first... Well, well, I mean, in the third episode. Yeah. We talked about the micro expressions in their face that's animated and stuff like that. Mm. Such attention to detail. And, yeah, just like the little things popping up in the background, the the living, breathing world around these characters, moving and flowing the entire time. It's it's like you could step in there and be a part of it. Yeah. It's so cool, man. Everything has so much detail. Doesn't feel half-assed no. at all. Yeah. And that's what you expect. We're both big fans of movies that take you around to different unique locations as well and continuously um, keep you visually stimulated into new areas like that this movie is a prime example of that sort of thing done well yeah if we're going to compare it to another movie we watched recently yeah the joker yeah why we didn't like joker 2 a big reason was because it had two settings careful because that's coming out oh no actually no, it's already out it's already out already by out. that point yeah sorry yeah. my brain is yeah, like 74 the fucking joker's been episode 73 seven, whatever 73. it is i don't 73. know 73 73 anyway <laughs> what we said last week apparently yeah. is that that's what we said. Yeah. It's in two settings the whole time. Mm-hmm. This sits, you know, you've got oh. Miles's world. You've got Gwen's world. Yeah. You've got um, 2099 world, the Miles alternative world mm. with, um, 
you know, the mewing miles in it. Mewing miles. Uh, can we talk about also just touching on the soundtrack of everything as well? You, you step into a new world and it is a different soundtrack every single time. Yep. Uh, Gwen's world, we have like the cool sort of vibey, like, you know, obviously the drum intro and stuff. Punk rockers, hip hoppers. Punk rockers. And, yeah. And, um, but like the cool, like jangly guitar, it's almost shoegazy going over the top and just layering the, that's the whole thing of Gwen's world feels like a shoegaze album. Mm. That's because it's just like mushy and like wobbly. And it's like you put a, this is musician terms, but it's like you put a chorus pedal on a world and the whole thing's just like, Makes it all, all, all wobbly and all shit. cool. But then you step into Miles as well, and then the theme changes. You know, it's got the the sick like back beats to everything while he's like swinging yes. around. Yeah, and yeah. It feels groovy. You know, you you feel the youthfulness in the music as well because it's like he spent a year as Spider Man after meeting the guys, refined his skills. The music feels less um, like kiddish, but it's like it's a youthful sort of like energetic teen and then sort of like. 29, it's perfect 29 nine's music Weird. is just, <laughs> great great theme as great well great theme yeah, yeah. Uh, and when that because that's been used in so many memes now oh just yeah and i'm gonna do man. my own thing as well <laughs> i fucking like i lost it when miguel's theme came on yeah how did you rate spot as a villain i thought it was pretty good um pretty good mm. well Actually, no, I really like Spot. And I respected them for using that character, such a silly character in this. And make and like owning that at the beginning. Yeah. And evolving it into, holy crap, this guy, he can do some damage. He was just a villain of the week at the start and they turned him into the villain. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing as well. Like Adjust my nutsack there. <laughs> to, unfortunately, to Sp- one of Spider-Man's flaws and it is a big part of why people like the character of all iterations is his quips and stuff like that but that is part of the reason why like him not taking this villain seriously at the beginning and kind of just brushing him off and quipping and being silly and stuff like that is part of the reason why spot was spurred on to go bigger and better and the bagel and the bagel, man, the bagel, that was a canon bagel, event right man. there. I do remember all the memes as well on TikTok and it's like me watching Spider-Man and then it's like, the bagel, if you know, you know. Yeah. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut up, man. Yeah. Go outside and <laughs> breathe air. <laughs> Live a little. Live a little. Seriously. Oh, the bagel. The bagel. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. No, the bagel was good little detail. I See, again, good yeah. story writing. But they, you know um, what I, I also liked as well? I liked the bagel. Just want to put that out like there. The I was just mocking people. Yeah. Um, but it, was, it wasn't it was just Spot as the villain, which I liked as well. We had Miguel almost as like an anti-hero, more of an, an antagonist, I would say. Oh, yeah. He was like the main antagonist at the center of the movie. Well, yeah, because they got to use Spot for the next one as the main. But main. also, it probably won't be Spot for the next one. Who do you reckon it's going to be? Evil Miles, maybe. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. and and probably Miguel's got a snap as well. Yeah, no, I feel like Miguel might have a bit of a. They're gonna have a fight, sure. They're gonna have a fight, but Miguel. Okay, this is just me theorizing. Yeah, yeah. If I get this right, I feel like Miguel's gonna die. Oh. I feel like he's gonna die. Going shit! I've gone too far. We're gonna make this right. And he sacrifices, sacrifices himself, himself for miles. For miles, yeah. Maybe he sacrifices himself to save the captain. Oh, imagine that. Shit, dog. Imagine that. Shit, dog. Log these predictions right now. Log, log them in. Put them in. Put them in your sports bet. Uh, we're taking. We're taking all your money. Oh, true, actually. Because today's the US election. I put money on Kanye just for a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> You know, it's That's incredible. Pr- yeah, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Um, the y- there was one scene in particular that you that really spoke to you, I know, and that was the chase scene. Yes, the Spider Man. That was mad. Scene. That was so cool. The, that was one of the funnest scenes of the entire film. The energy in that it was electric, wasn't it? Yeah, 
uh, literally, I mean, Miles got out of that situation using his electrokinesis. I think all the little quips, the little moments that happened. Yeah, you know, yeah. In the 1960s, Spider-Man goes, Hoo! and he's like, oh, I've pulled something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, the therapy Spider-Man? It's like, let me guess. Your uncle, he died. And then everyone just smashes <laughs> through the wall. Yeah. There was great. the one where it's like, there's nowhere left to run. And then he smashes out the window. He's like, oh, Sorry. my bad, team. My bad. Uh, <laughs> little things like that just yeah. make the scene so fun. Um, witty it's humor the- that's kind of like... It's it's like a modern witty humor. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing Big fan. with uh, the spot scene at the start. Gotcha. He's got his hand on the... Hand, uh, on the ATM? Shelf. The shelf. The shelf. And then he's got the bread pouring out of his stomach. Yeah. He's going in the ATM. That whole scene, it's like, who left the ATM on the sidewalk and yeah, all this stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That is just such a great scene. Yeah. Both of them are is exactly what you can do with animation. I was a big fan of that intro scene as well, actually. Um, they're fun, they're poppy, they're interesting. Yeah, for sure. And, oh, it just... The dynamic between characters in each of these scenes was really cool as well. It really felt like you were listening to them Mm -hmm. actually connect on levels because you can compare it to a lot of um, other like action-y sort of superhero sort of movies. Sometimes it feels like the characters aren't... They're not really gelling with each other sometimes. There's a lot of movies where they do, but I would say an example where characters don't really like merge super well sometimes in like an animation sort of thing is like uh the michael bay transformers movies sometimes when like the transformers are talking to the the humans Mm. it's like sometimes you don't get that connection it feels like they're having their conversation and talking but it's not really going in the ears of people like that's like me right now yeah maybe (laughs) but basically like it felt like every everyone was really um connecting on a, a great level and um the real oh the relationship between uh miles as spider-man with his dad as the cop at the start as well yes a, like a different relationship the jeff getting advice from spider-man his son about <laughs> his son is such a cool thing yeah that was hilarious yeah I really liked that. I really liked Gwen and Miles's love story as well. Well, yeah. brewing love story. That's going to be. Oh, you might have to, to bring see. the mic just a little closer. Just want to be like that. Yeah, yeah, just a little closer. Their um, their story. Yeah. I can't remember what I was saying. But <laughs> fuck yeah. No, that's good. We also got to see Peter B. Parker come back. That was good. Yeah. Um, sad we didn't get to see yeah Noir Spider Man. Mm. And a couple of the other guys. We didn't get to see Spider Ham either. We, yeah, that's unfortunate. But like you know, I feel like it filled out the space enough with the characters that we had and the new ones enough to make it that it was like it's still it's still okay that they're not here. We know that they're going to come back in the third one, which makes it even more exciting to see yeah. where this goes. You know? Do you reckon they did twenty ninety nine Spider Man correct? Mm, I think they did. I think they did, and they did him in a way that makes sense for his mission that he's on. Because at the end of the first movie, right, we do see 2099 Spider-Man. He's much more, like, quippy and... Is he? Not he, really. he no, he, he, he's a little bit... He's in one post credit scene. He, I know, but he's much less serious in that single scene. Well, it's only because it's the Spider-Man cameo where they're all pointing at each other. Yeah, but even when he's talking to the lady on the... I don't know what her name is. The one that's, like, floating around and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, there's much more of, like, a... I don't know, a relaxed energy about him. But he's been doing this for this long now. And now it's like it's starting to eat away at him. Mm. All of this... All the multiversal issues that he has to go and fix to stop things from, you know being destroyed i disagree i reckon he was basically the same in the post credit scene exactly the same yeah i thought i I think his character really got to see i'm saying that is a good thing though i'm saying like it makes sense for his character yeah see i don't reckon you really got to see much of him in the post credit you didn't no that's that's correct i don't know if you can say his character's evolved from one two minute scene to now go back to that scene verify it just saying yeah no that's fair enough but i think I think they did his character well and the pressure amounted on his shoulders to be the Spider-Man 
out of leading all the other spider people mm. is like uh, it shows well i think we'll end it on how did you uh how, how do you reckon you rated the ending oh very good exciting i'm, keen. I'm yeah. keen i thought the open-ended ending yeah was very good very 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 good yeah i like that miles is captured by uh cornrows miles <laughs> you know we got um we got miles there just like with his fist on the punching bag yeah kind of just like mogging him yeah that was yeah. pretty mad that was good um oh and you, in the wrong universe the whole twist of that end scene as well like mm-hmm. you, you actually do think it's really well done the parallel between gwen's and miles perspective and they're swinging through the reigning city but slightly different color palettes very so slightly and you're like oh hold on a second they're in the same place, right? No, they're not. Yeah. That threw me off guard the first time I watched it, for sure. Big reveal. Spots about to kill the uh, the dad. It really is a massive James Hardy or whatever his name is. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Hardy. <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Uh, Jeff Hardy's about to die. Yeah. Miguel's trying to find Miles. I mean, it's all happening. It's, it's all, all happening. happening. It's, it's red hot. It's getting into it. And Gwen's got a super team. It started with Gwen. It's ended with Gwen. Yeah. I like that. I, really I like that, that a lot. Well. I think that... It's a perfect setup for a third movie and it really is shaping up and I, I don't want to hype it up too much, but I'm hoping it executes to be one of the greatest trilogies of all time. Well, I think there's going to be four, so, you know. Ah, oh, quadrilogy. Yeah. Is there actually going to be four? It's going to be Beyond the Spider-Verse Part 1 and Part 2 from uh, my knowledge. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to be that big. Need to get that money. I guess they got to get that money, but technically that will be a trilogy though because it's Part 1 and Part 2. I would... Because it's like Kill Bill, that's technically one movie. Like, in the Tarantino-verse, they count that as one movie, but it's two. Right. You get what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's iffy. I say it's two. Yeah. Fuck all you <laughs> dogs. <laughs> I'm just saying the facts. <laughs> Oi, before, before you do that, let me give you two quotes. I'll give you two quotes. Um, in this line of work, you always end up a solo act. Damn. Big, deep thing from Gwen there, at the I think it was at the beginning of the movie. But it's been... Peter Parker's story from the very beginning of his inception. Penis Parker. And also, yeah, I think it's a Banksy, the random Oh, guy. yes. Yeah. That is so good. <laughs> that was good. I like that. There's so many good little... I mean, if we're going to go in quotes, I really liked, um, I think it was Pravit Parker, and he's like talking about the chai tea. And oh, he's like, you're saying TT. The TT. We didn't even talk about... Um, oh, yeah, we missed that whole Mumbai. Year, um, um, Mumbai Hatton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, how... Uh, Here's the traffic. Here's the traffic. Here's more traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. So there's so much in this movie, honestly. Uh, oh, we haven't even talked about Hoagie either. Hody. Hoagie? Hoagie? Oh, oh they be your favorite. Spider Punk. What? Oh, we I, haven't even talked about Spider Punk. Thought he'd be your favorite. Wow. Wow. I didn't even know his name. I really liked his character too. Mm. God damn it. Oh. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he's really cool. He's, I mean, after playing, you know, the video game and having the spider punk skin and then seeing him in the movie it's like oh that's really sick yeah when um when hoagie sees like the baby peter b parker's baby poo yeah and then he's like yeah take a poo on the system <laughs> like that. he's mad it's like kid's an anarchist one thing i uh, didn't get though yeah it's just before the spider-man chase scene mm-hmm. and hoagie leaves by going out the portal and you see him throw his like little what is it? The universe what, traveler thing? I know where you're going with this. And then later on, yeah, he somehow Gwen's dad has got his little control system, little bracelet. How did the bracelet get to Gwen's dad when he just obviously traveled back to his universe? I quit and throws it back he in throws the universe. It back. So how did you get back? You can't get your you can't bracelet get your thing. back without Miguel or someone coming to get you. Yeah. And they're all preoccupied trying to get Miles. Mm. So that made no sense mm. how... All right, this is the only logical answer. He dropped his bracelet in uh, like before that chase scene and then yeah. 20 minutes later, it's like his bracelet's at yeah. Gwen's dad's place. Mm-hmm. How? I don't how did understand. That, get there? that makes no sense. Unless someone got it there for him. No, because, no. He, said, because he said he met with the dad, right? Yeah. Well, the dad said he was there. He was a character. He was a real piece of work. He was a real piece of work. 
How Interesting. Did do I that? don't know. Made no sense to me. That makes no sense. No. One bit of flawed logic that brings it down a little bit. Oh, huge. Probably brings it down at least six nugs. Six for nugs, me. yeah. Oh, yeah. This movie's terrible. It is. Yeah. It's shit. I can't stand it. Trivia time. Please. Uh, the sequence on Earth 13122, the Lego universe, was animated by 14 year old Preston Matanga. <sighs> yep. Who cool. was hired after Phil Lord and Chris Miller were impressed by his Twitter video recreating the entire trailer with Lego. That's so sick. And they just went, let's add this. So they hired a 14-year-old kid to do that entire scene. That is the coolest thing is that for a kid to do. Not man. mad. Wow. What? You know what? That's the start of his career. If, yeah, if he wants to pursue animation. He's always got that on the CV now. Boom. I worked on Spider-Verse. Yeah. yeah. One of the best animated movies ever. Insane. Wow. That's really um, cool. Phil Lord says... Yeah. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller revealed that they told uh, Sony the sequel would be the same size as the first Spider-Man, but it ended up having the largest crew of any animated movie ever with wow. a thousand people working on it. Whoa. They added... Oh, they added that it has 240 characters and takes place in six universes. Wow. Fucked. You know what? Again, comparing it to another film that was supposed to be crazy multiversal, Doctor Strange should have taken a note from that. Yeah, exactly. That was meant to be the big multiverse movie, and all we got is, like, everyone dying in two seconds. And Zombie Strange waving his hands around and doing fucking nothing. (gasps) Stupid. It's dumb. Anyways. Um, Yeah, that's pretty cool. I got a bit more trivia for this one. I got another two points. It's I, such a big stacked film. It's so interesting. So Ganky, we see Ganky, yeah, Miles's friend, and he's playing yeah. Spider Man Two on the PS Five. You see him Is playing. He actually, oh, you didn't know that. I didn't know that. So yeah, you, when he's sitting down playing video games, he's like, yeah, I'll get to my essay later. He's yeah, like, where are my Jordans? She's like that. Um, <laughs> Ganky is actually playing the PlayStation, wow. and you can see just gameplay of the actual video game on yeah. the screen. That's awesome. Wow, I didn't even pick that oh, detail. I thought you knew so that. Cool. Yeah, we should watch that after the film. For I sure. mean, after the podcast, we should. Or the film? Why not? Yeah. Uh, last bit of trivia. Yep. When the spot is revealing his backstory, there is a brief scene showing Spider-Man 42 being teleported from its original universe. In this scene, Spider-Man 42 was crawling on Miles Morales 42's desk and was about to bite him, showing that the Miles Morales in the 42 universe, who's now the Prowler, was meant to be the Spider-Man of that universe. Yeah. So, fuck. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Fucked. I really think that's an, such an interesting concept of like, you know, what Miles could have become so in the wrong Miles, with the wrong influence. You know, yeah, that's the thing. Like, you know, your uh, your kids are a product or, of an environment that's around them. Okay, sort of thing. Mr. Parental Man. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just giving you the facts because uh, he was around some good people when um, uh, the spot in the first movie, and he became. The and dude you're he pro is. smacking your child as well, aren't you? Yeah, discipline your kids. Just punch him in the head. I'm pro throwing them in the pool. And just letting As us infants. learn how to swim. <laughs> learn! <laughs> yeah. Learn, you fiend. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can you can float with that nappy full of poo. Yeah, worth it. it. <laughs> I ain't washing it. Wash it yourself. <laughs> Letterbox time. Please. Adam Bolt says, Sony, I solemnly swear to watch all the Morbius and Venom sequels if you keep making these. Five stars. That's crazy. That's dedication. I would never do that. You would never do that? No. Oh, well, actually, we're going to have to do that, aren't yeah, we? we? Yeah, we are going to have to we're do gonna that. We're going to do that. Um, I've got here from Joe Brewer. says, <laughs> pump this shit in my veins. Five stars. Oh, relatable. Um, from Fat Baby, twist your, much, twist your nuts as much as you can and send Shorty a live photo. Oh, sorry, wrong one there. <laughs> um, what the fuck, man? Whoops. I wasn't meant to read that one. And we've got <laughs> that from... Was from the, uh, that was from the... The back rooms of your brain right there. From Lily, we've got Coughing Baby, brackets, MCU Spider-Man films versus Hydrogen Bomb, Spider-Verse films. So, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's deep. Five stars. She's also given it. Um, Very popular film amongst the fans. Everybody loved it. Oh, yeah. Great success. It was very good. Yeah. So good that it's time to give our scores. Do you want me to tell you uh, what what our scores were for the... For the first movie, 
Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the score for the first movie? I gave the first movie a nine. Yeah. You gave the first movie a nine. Wow. And what are you giving it today? Well, I was going to give this a nine, but I said it was better. So can I give it a 9.1 or is that not legal? You can't do that. It can see, we, we, we're only in uh, increments of five. I'm going to give this a nine. But it is on better. On the basis that I think this is better. Yeah. That's... Well done. I... Just giving it just slightly half below an 8.5. Seven? Oh my God. <laughs> 8. That's 5. it. Bros knows best. Yeah. And that was another episode of Bros Knows Best. That's right. If you enjoyed this episode, then you can check us out elsewhere. Can't you, Scott? Oh, you betcha. You can check us out on YouTube. Uh, Spotify, all podcast platforms. That's probably where you just listened or watched us then. Yeah. But we have social platforms too, don't we, Scott? Oh, we do, like Instagram. Oh, my God, TikTok. Oh, it's insane. And YouTube Shorts. If you like us, follow us there. We've got content, we've got episodes, and we'll see you guys soon. No, that's when you say next week. Next week. Fucking Jesus. Jesus.